Hey, how you doing? This is Kareem Wins from www.realentertainmentnews.com. It's a beautiful day out here in Arizona. Just sitting here, max and relaxing, parking lot, baby, on the down, doing the damn thing. <laughs> and I'm sitting here with the Arizona legend right now. Wow. Mr. Zigzag, how we doing today? Man, that's just a blessing just to even be mentioning the legend. Ah, uh, it's good, man. Everything's good. We're here. We're blessed, man. We're chilling with y'all. An interview in the back of a limo, it's still good. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, kind right. of a unique situation. So we're on our way back to the uh, Legal Eyes 2 event, where yes. we are here with the, the, the main event. Um, man, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful day. It's, it's a cold day out there. Yeah, you know what? I, the thing about, I, you know, it's a little chilly today. It, it came out of nowhere. <laughs> but honestly, uh, Man, just to see the progression of what Arizona's music, hip hop progression has started since we started out in 96, 97, that's the biggest thing I think that makes me feel accomplished is that I watch other artists blossom and, 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 and they're doing it. And they're, getting, they're putting the, the, the map, you know, the, the state on the map now. Yeah. And I, I just remember when we started out, there was only a little handful and now it's just you know, hundreds. You know, at least a thousand MCs. I know for sure in Arizona, killing. Yeah, I think um, with the evolution of the internet and you know being able to move files through the internet yes. and Instagram and social media, you know, it gives you the opportunity to really, really take your career to the next level. You're not shackled down by oh, no. radio. No, you know. Um, and you know what it is? It's, it's that old school independent artist thing again. If you if you if you're able to cover yourself a fan base, let's just say throughout the Southwest, you're able to be uh, okay. Let's just say physical fan base. Let's say a thousand people within that Southwest. Yeah. Now you, you try to captivate on that. You try to hit that thousand that thousand album mark. You know, ten bucks times ten. That's ten racks. Yeah. And you got to market it to them. But now in order to get around you have to go do shows you got to go show your face you got to go show your brand if you don't show your brand then nobody knows it exists so i believe that's what i've been doing for the last uh let's say 10 years on my own i've been just going around the southwest poking my head everywhere i could show you know um, be it a, a concert be it a wedding be it a, a, a whatever it be I've, I've done them all and i think that's what's kept my my career alive in that sense it's just being able to just flow and keep your fan base but see the thing with social media is when you touch them physically then that's how you keep uh, you keep with them is on social media don't be you know don't be bougie you know be humble say hey man i yeah. remember at the show whatever blah, blah, blah. how do you feel about um the internet <coughs> well let me ask this how do you feel about today's time with the internet and being able to have streaming services versus just the radio and the physical album sales. Now with the streaming services, uh, how do you feel about that? I feel if you're an independent artist and you got a buzz, it could work for you. And that's where you make your money, all your money, all you. Um, but another way that it's it's hurt the industry is it just opened the floodgates for a lot of artists to come in with just whatever type of music to kind of hurt. It's kind of like salmon going upstream. Yeah. That's how many artists are now. They're just going and going and going, and you can't, you can't stop what's going on. I think it kind of went backwards from where people were just paying attention to the music. Now it's like I want to see what he's driving. I want to see what he's doing. What the color of hair this guy's got. What what kind of shoes is this dude wearing? It ain't about the music no more. I think it's more about image, like the it's image, image and who you are as a person. I think people because we got. So bamboozled by so many fake people talking about they thugs, but they really was rich people. Well, you know, it's not even. I, I think this is what I see. I, I, I explained it the other night at this party. It was a bunch of young kids. I got to perform at a kid's 18 year old birthday party. That's, oh, wow. You know what I mean? Just to, And he was, he was a young man, so he was like, man, you're one of my favorite artists. Why don't you perform at my birthday party? He got to do it. So, shout out to my boy. You know what I mean? Um, so, going back to that, I told him, look, man. What's going on right now are these 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 artists like this that Tekanashi Six Nine or whatever his name is. These, yeah, 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 him and these other artists that are out there, kind of just being real blank and, and just going like hard. I feel like they're experiments, only because there's these millionaires that sit there and see these kids' lives, and they're like, you know, this kid, this dude's influential. 
Let me go ahead and put a couple million in his pocket and see what he does with this. Yeah. So they go out there, they run them up, they talk all this, they do this and they do that. And it's monkey see, monkey do with the young kids. The young kids don't have leaders because none of the OGs have stepped up. Snoop, Dre, none of these cats have stepped up in a sense to say, hey man, you know, I'm a, this is how the music's really supposed to be and we gotta stick to this formula. But they know that what happened was everybody enjoyed the fruits, chilled out, took a vacation, came back, and these little young kids, now they don't listen to the OGs because the OGs didn't listen to them. So I think that's what's gone on. Is it's 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 become an old G game because you got to think when we started out, it was Run DMC, it was uh, Big Daddy Kane, it was uh, uh, you can go down the list, Rakim. All these people were grown men rapping hip hop, P, uh, uh, Public Enemy, and then all of a sudden here came in the gangster music that woke up the West Coast, and everybody was like, "Ooh, we got to know something over here in the West now." And I really believe that was the spark of our voice for the real hood, the real ghetto, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it the barrio. It's the same shit, bro. Yeah. We all live in it. I think um, hip hop hasn't respected its elders since the beginning of time. You know, they don't they don't cherish their elders like rock. No, you know, no like, way, no way. Like country music, they don't cherish the people that paved the way. You know, no, no. you think about it. Somebody like KRS One, yes, he should be getting thirty, forty thousand a show right now. Yes, you know, but somebody like a Takashi Six Nine, he'll get that for a hundred bands. Yeah, yeah, he got a hundred bands a show. Yeah. You know, and 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 it's no knock on Takashi Six Nine no, no, getting no. His, his money. No, but in the same token, why are we, why are we respecting? You think Aerosmith? They, you know. Aerosmith is selling off arenas. Oh, yes. You know? Like... And that's the sad part about um, hip-hop. It's going backwards. It's going backwards in the sense of what what it really stood for. Now, I just believe there's 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 the hip-hop and then there's rap music. Now, I believe rap music is just a short term of trap. Trap, trap your mentality. Trap your whole way of life. Trap yeah. and think that's all you're going to be. That's all you're ever going to do. You're not going to accomplish anything. Nothing. You're trapped. Hip hop gave you a freedom. I was able to color a wall and make it beautiful. I was able to grab a mic and tell you words that inspired you. I was able to make a beat and make you dance. They want to make you almost break your neck. That is what we have lost. We have lost the essence, the essence of what hip hop is. And it's not a color. That's the whole thing. It's not a, and, and, and I believe the racial shit, all that racial shit is, is man made, homie. It's not, if, if they keep putting it on TV, if they keep putting it on a TV, you're going to fall into it sometime. I watch Facebook, I go down the scrolls, and all I see is division, division, division. I don't see black and white, black and brown, black and white, whatever the colors. I'm looking at it as like they're just dividing us as human beings. Yeah. And that's just how the world is. And hip hop, I believe, was the new rock and roll at one time that had the voice for the hood, the ghetto, the, the, the average person to be like, hey man, this is what's happening, this is what's going down. This is what I feel proud of myself. You know what I mean? Look at Nas. You know, he did that song with them, I think I can, I think, you know, he put, yeah. that to me was giving back. Yeah. And I believe young artists need to start doing that. If Takashi and all them cats can make a hundred bands a show, then they, they could buy a couple houses to put a couple homes down. Yeah. That's what I think the young youth needs to do with their money. Okay, you have best back. But, but to to Takashi Six Nines credit, he gives away a lot of money to the kids. Probably. He does give away a lot of money to like, because you know, he's enjoying are, the moment. That's a good yeah, thing, man. It's a know, good thing to enjoy the moment. He's one of the only new artists that's up and coming nowadays that are doing that. I don't see too many other artists. But the bad part of it, is, I, I see sometimes that some of these mainstream artists have to compromise themselves in order to go further in the deals and get them multi-million dollar deals. That's why I like playing in the. I like playing in the league I play. Independent league. Nobody tells me what to do. I book my own shows. I'm still current. I'm still doing my thing. I'm still out here in the hood getting that hood love. That's that's a whole different type of love than just getting, oh, hey, homie, I, I know your music. Oh, yeah. man, they see me out there. They see me doing my thing. I'll show up to a uh, backyard boogie and need a plate with you. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not Hollywood at all, homie. I keep a hell of it all the time. Yeah. And, and I love the fact that, you know, I would, I, I've been able to be called a legend, but it's almost like saying you guys ain't seen nothing yet from what I'm, I feel because I've been putting myself in a box. And in my career, because sometimes you look at what's out and what's out 
there and you're saying, man, if I put this type of music out, it's not, it's not as popular as it used to be. But now, I'm so much in the pocket and happy with the type of music I make, I'm happy to put it out. And it might stand different from the trap music, the R&B, the whatever type of music is out there right now. It's so gonna sound a little different. So let me ask you this, what do you feel the music that you're creating today, how does it differ from the music that you created in the past? You know, um, as far as sound, as far well, when as I did with the MB Riders, that was a lot of who I was at the time. I was going through some personal shit, so I wrote it. You know, what I mean? Magic was um, the type of guy that we got this topic, this writer, and I would write whatever I felt, and, and there was a lot of personal issues in it. So then, when I split from the group, I was kind of trying to emulate what was out. So I would go and listen to my favorite West Coast rappers, my favorite battle rappers, my favorite. Uh, you know, uh, dance rappers, whatever. And I was just trying to make a, a, a sound out there. But what I found that I lost was I found my, my personal connection that I had with my fans. Because now I was more on like, look at me, look at me, who I am, you know what I mean? I wasn't yeah. talking from a, you know, a different point of view that I was at one time. So when I started writing that again, my fans started paying attention to me. And I think sometimes that's what we have to do. We have to be called we have to do what we've been called to do. And I feel like I've suffered a lifetime to write some beautiful music. And I'm able to, to express my pain in my, in my music enough for people to say, hey, you know what? That's why we hang on to your music for 20 fucking years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I've, I've been in the game almost 22 years now. Strong. The music's still out there, still doing it. Why? Because people have attached themselves to my words, or their words, or whatever's words. Well, I, I think it's a it's it's a, it's a story that you've told for, for 22 years yeah. that people can relate to. I always tell people this all the time. It's like the reason why an artist is probably your favorite artist is because somehow, some way, you're able to relate to that person. Yeah, you know, and that relatability is what keeps you in the game. It what keeps us the dog in the game. It's what keeps you know. Dre in the game it keeps everybody in the game and being able to, you know, it's like people, it's like you're, uh, what, what, what is that show? Uh, it's like, it's like Urkel, it's like watching Urkel grow up, you know? Oh, well, yeah. Like, you know, it's like, wow, look at him now. Look at the brand. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah, and you know, I think, what I, like, I mean, you know what the perfect example of that is right there? They just put Roseanne back on the air. So she used to be a show that everybody would watch, and then all of a sudden now she's got it back because, in some way, somehow it lingered that we need something like this. Yeah. And I and I hope that my new album that I have out now called the Collection, it kind of gets you familiarized with what, what I've been doing outside of the group, you know, with my R&B stuff. And then I got a new I got a new album coming out at the end of uh, June called Slow Rider, and basically what it is, it's just my R&B style that I went back to personal, real personal album. So when you listen to it, you're gonna be like, wow, see, it went through it, you know? It's not always up here, bro. It's these down here's that make your up here's better when you achieve it. And I feel like I've gone through a lot of personal issues that's try to stop me from feeling good about my career. So when I look at my career, I'm like, man, I don't care about the million fans. I don't care about the million dollars. I don't care about all that bullshit. You know what I care about? Do I have my family? Do I have my friends? Do I have my loved ones coming? When all that shit don't work, that means nothing. And I think a lot of celebrities live upside down. They live in the sense of what makes them feel good is the celebrityism. They oh, I'm a celebrity, I feel good. I used to feel like that. I used to look at it and be like, oh, because I'm a celebrity, I'm going to go ahead and feel a little bit better. Nah, bro, it hurts worse. Because motherfuckers are looking at you first. They, they, they want to, your downfall to happen. That's how the, the game goes. But I've been here 22 years. And, and for people to still be bumping the music, man, that's the blessing. I, I thank God for that. Um, what is your favorite record off the album right now? Uh, right now? Um, it's got to be If You Think You're Lonely Now. I got this uh, record that I kind of redid that Bobby Womack. Um, and uh, I think that's it, right? If You Think You're Lonely Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah and... Um, I just flipped it, man, and it did something to where it was kind of like a personal record. You know, I felt like I didn't get the I didn't get the chance to tell the person, you know, hey, I was lonely too, you know, because I had work. So 
real good record, man. So, so, what do you, uh, what do you feel that record will bring to the marketplace right now? Um, that's not a record. Honestly, just honesty. It's just an honest record. Like when you, when you heard Adele sing that song, you didn't know that was gonna be a Grammy award winning song. I don't remember what it was that when she was all heartbroken. Yeah. People took it. And then I'm gonna tell you, sometimes that's what happens. A heartbroken song is what made you hit. Yeah. And I think that's kind of it. It's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of a happy ending with a little bit of um, like you know, I, I know I did wrong type of thing. So I think a fella that maybe. You know, because, you know, these young kids are living faster now. Yeah. So they don't have anybody to talk to. I feel like I can talk. Like, I can tell you. I can tell you, lady, for you. Hey, I'm fucking up. You know? yeah. Make it sound cooler. <laughs> and, and I think people uh, relate. Relate. Again, it goes back to relatability and that pain. You know, it's like, they look at you and like, wow, zigzag went through the same thing I went through. Like, oh, yeah. And then they really, really understand that zigzag is a human being just like me. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, man. Like, I've never, you know what kept me grounded? On my friends and my family and my loved ones. That's what keeps me grounded. Because they'll tell me quick, yo, oh, man, no, that's not you. Yeah. And, and, and just having my grandparents still around, stuff like that, that keeps me humble more than ever. Because I don't want to let them down and be like, because, you know, you know, grandma going to be the first one to tell you, hey, you, 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 you know, you ain't too good. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell that story when you shit your pants when you were a kid. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Put you on blast, homie. They get you. Act out of line, they get you. And I like that. I like that my friends would tell me, hey, Z, you know, you're stepping out of line a little bit. You're drinking too much tonight. You're, you're yes. doing this. And, hey, man, I don't think that's a good idea for you. Got to have, you know what? The, the game is surrounded with yes men. Yeah. And you got to get away from it. And I think that's what makes a successful artist like yourself successful because. You don't have a bunch of yes men around. No, you have no, no, no. real people around you that's yes. like, listen, that's not cool, brother. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, you can hate me right now, but when you wake up in the morning, you understand uh -huh. why I told you this, you'll thank me later. Yes, yeah, many wild nights like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, though. It's a good, it's, you know why? Because we live in the moment. I mean, we're living it now. Like, Who knows what the five years is going to be next year? You know, who, how do you know we're not going to be the ones being bombed? This world is nuts, y'all. And yeah. I just want to live the moment, enjoying it, and saying I did what I told myself I was going to do ever since I was a young kid. Yeah. And then I can't, I can't go wrong with that. God yeah. told me, you know, early on, just follow your dream and you're going to get it. And I have and I'm still here, you know. Yeah. You're yeah. back of a limo, chilling. Let's go. <laughs>